My video blog number four. Thanks for returning. My subject today is what happens when we die. And it's kind of silly to talk about it because everybody knows we've all done it a million times, but uh, for some reason we all seem to forget amnesia is common on this subject. So I'm hoping I can uh, clear things up a little bit. Uh, sad for you, I'm an authority on this subject. I always like to think there are lots of people in the world who are much smarter and more enlightened than me, and I'm always kind of uh, disappointed and rather horrified if I start to think that's not true. Um, I'm an authority partly because I have been dead in this lifetime. It was brief, and the story is not one I'm going to tell here. It's a little embarrassing. But, um... I remember it in great detail, even though it was about 14 years ago, and um, once I had that experience, I remembered other times uh, passing between this world and the next uh, many, many, many times. So once all that came back to me, uh, I guess that made me an authority. Oh no. <laughs> it's worse than I thought. <laughs> anyway, so... Um, when we die, we generally go to the uh, go towards the bright light. I know, so cliche, but it's true. So we go to the light, and then we check in. Now, if you need a loved one, you know, long lost uh, person to appear there and kind of help you get there, then that happens. But if you don't need that, it doesn't happen. You just go to the table and check in. <laughs> um, once you check in, your life review is usually one of the first things that happens. Now, I'm making generalizations, and there are variations on this theme, and they're all catered towards what the individual needs at the time. But there's a lot of stuff that just kind of tends to happen every time. So once you check in, you go talk to your teachers, if you will. Um, one person, three people, uh, somebody usually you've seen many, many times before who has done this for you a lot. They help you to understand your life review. So you review the life that you just finished, and you see it in sometimes uh, astounding detail. Somebody's keeping track, and they're keeping track of every little detail of every life we live. It's really... Um, uh, fascinating and amazing and um, it's sort of nice to know somebody cares, right? Um, so the idea with the life review, it's not about punishment, it's about learning because we all screw up a lot, every one of us <laughs> make a lot of mistakes and we tend to make the same mistakes over and over again and so we need the opportunity to learn from each lifetime so that we can do better next time. And each of us incarnated with a plan, with a life purpose, with some commitments. Sometimes those are commitments we've made in the previous life and didn't fulfill. And we need to find a way to live up to those commitments. And those are really important. And we tend to forget them really quickly. We get here to this abundant world and we get distracted. We get distracted by all the stuff. We get distracted by all the people, you know, the entertainment, the media, the politics, all this stuff. Pretty soon, you know, we're, we're thinking life is about accumulating money or something, which uh, you still can't take with you. So, um, we tend to forget what we plan to do once we get here, and that is a uh, cause for uh, concern, because it's more difficult to fulfill your plans if you don't remember making them. <laughs> Not impossible, but more difficult. And, um... It seems, well, it seems like anybody can get in here and get a body, you know, any old time. It doesn't seem like there's a standard, but there is. And there are always consequences for how we choose to live. Uh, it's just oftentimes those consequences take a very long time to show up. And by that time, we can't put it together. It's a big thought. Our minds are small. 
too bad. Limitations of being human. We can always get bigger, you know, more broad-minded, more open-minded, but that is difficult. Um, and people forget this kind of stuff and focus on hedonism a lot when they get to this abundant place, this planet Earth. So, when we die in this world, we get born again in the other world, and then back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, however many times we need to or get to or want to. And we have to apply each time. We have to make commitments, and we need to uh, fulfill some commitments. You know, we don't, don't get infinite chances to make the same mistakes. So, we check in, we get our life review, our teachers go over it, and sometimes there's harsh criticism, and people could consider that, I guess, hell or something, I don't know, it's not really intended to be a punishment, but uh, sometimes people take it that way, and um, if we've come back really damaged, we have to go check into a place that's... Um, it's not really like a hospital, it's not exactly like a prison, uh, it's kind of like both of those, and kind of not like both of those, and we are usually kept in isolation, and people come around to uh, help us with our healing process, and they're usually veiled, so we don't know who they are. And this is, uh, as far as I know, a very consistent thing, that um, people who do the healing work do so anonymously, and it helps the... Uh, person who's healing focus on themselves. And uh, it's a great opportunity for training. People want to do healing work in this world to do the healing work there because it's much more intensely supervised there. Um, whereas once we get here, it's a free-for-all, in case you haven't noticed. Do anything! <laughs> um, there's, uh, there are other facilities in this place we go after we die, and... Uh, it's all pretty mundane, I'm sorry to say, and I'm sorry if this is boring when you were expecting harps and angels and only Mozart got those. Um, there's uh, something like a bank, but there's no money, because you can't take it with you, but you can, um, through your actions and your words and deeds, create what is commonly referred to as karma, but doesn't seem to be very well understood. Um, we do get um, credits and deficits based on how we live, and if we have a really good reason, we can go check out our account and see how we're doing. But we can't just do these things randomly or out of curiosity. We have to have a good reason. We have to have a way that we intend to apply that information, uh, something uh, that is useful. There's also something like a classroom where we meet our usual people. We have friends or peers or classmates who are often working on similar lessons to the ones we're working on and uh, you know, they're kind of a support for us and they want to know how things went and um, you know we can hang out with them when we're doing our studying which we have to do sometimes quite a lot of before we get another chance. We may get a lot of chances but we have to show a good effort towards uh, improving what we're doing and learning from our uh, past. So, there's plenty of other stuff that happens, but, you know, i got to keep this brief. So, um, if you have a question that you think, a question on any subject that you think I should answer, and uh, you want to email it to me, the email address is colshancollege at gmail.com. And uh, no guarantees, but if I like the question, I may answer it in my video blog. And I am offering classes and such through ColshanCollege.com. And uh, that's my main focus these days, Colson College, as I am training people in subtle technologies like meditation, mysticism, training people to be medical intuitives, training people in Qigong, stuff like that. That's kind of what I'm up to. So uh, thanks a lot for showing up. Take care.